Is it's meeting the order? Yes, sir. All right. No, we're going to start this now. Ready? Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Planning Commission meeting on Monday, April 25th, 2022. First order of business, we want to, I need a motion to accept the minutes from March 28, 2022. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, it's been accepted by Mr. Waters and second by Mr. Rose. All right. We have no board of uh, adjustment meetings tonight, I believe, right? So we're going to move right into the planning commission items and our director, Mr. Talton, I believe, will be presenting tonight. And beginning with the SU 222. The first one. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Good to see all y'all tonight. Let's see. Let's move on to our special use permit, SU-222. There you go. Yes, sir. Hey, Ms. Figueroa. Come on in. We were just getting started with our first case tonight. We're going to be reviewing two special use permit applications. One SU-222. This is for a special use permit for the operation of an automobile towing and recovery business located in the general business zoning district. So the applicant is requesting a special use permit for outside storage associated with an automobile mobile towing and recovery operation to be located at 514 North George Street and with the General Business Zoning District. According to the city's UDO and specific special use specific regulations, outdoor storage is a permitted use in the General Business Zoning District only after the attainment of a special use permit. So the site is currently vacant and undeveloped. Mm -hmm. The approval criteria for outdoor storage is as follows. Number one, all outdoor storage areas shall be located in the rear and side yards. Number two, the entire outdoor storage area shall be enclosed by an eight foot solid fence set back from adjoining property lines. The height of the fence may be reduced to six feet if the applicant provides evidence or written confirmation to the planning director that the items proposed to be stored would not exceed five feet in height. Number three, no loading or unloading of material shall occur outside the fenced area. Number four, material shall not be stacked to be visible from any public right-of-way property line. Mm -hmm. So as you can tell, the outline there in the red box, um, everything there is basically pavement. Old asphalt surfaces there. <coughs> to the southern property line, you're going to see a lot of existing vegetation. Um, to the north, of course, you see the little bit of vegetation with the Norfolk Southern Railroad line to the back of the property, I'm sorry, to the east of the property is a uh, private property with a storage warehouse facility. And across the street is a electrical supply house that almost serves as a little business incubator for other associated business uses inside of it. So the discussion the existing storage lot has been remain has remained vacant for over 10 years applicant intends to develop a lot for use of an automobile towing and recovery operation providing a wide range of services to include 24 7 emergency towing services car and truck towing motorcycle towing local long distance towing auto record services fast accident response winch outs and auto recovery services so according to our udo permit is required since outdoor storage is the primary use for the site. Applicant intends to store automobiles on the property for a temporary period of time until the automobiles have been cleared for reassignment or possession by their rightful owner or designated agent. The applicant states that automobiles will not be stored for salvage or parts. Currently, the applicant's investigating on-site modular office units which are North Carolina Building Code approved structures that will serve as the primary facility or transacting business with the general public. This will require site plan approval before setup and building permits are issued. 
The applicant intends to comply with the supplemental regulations previously discussed in accordance with the UDO until a commercial office facility can be secured in the future. Access is provided by a 24 foot wide driveway cut off of George Street. The proposed use does not require additional parking for the site. City water and sewer available it is not located in a special flood hazard area. At the public hearing on the 18th of this month, no one appeared to speak for or against the request. That's all I have for this site. Are there any questions that you have at this time? I will tell you that if you will. The property owner or the tenant for the warehouse directly to the east of the property, there is a loading ramp which you cannot see on the side adjacent to the railroad tracks. Um, <clears throat> He is concerned okay. that if that property is utilized that he might not be able to get access to the storage facility. That's something that uh, that the property owners are going to have to work out between themselves. Um, I would like to assume, well, you know what assume does to you, but mm -hmm. there is possibly an easement upon that property where the property owner to the east could access the storage ramp, but I'm not sure how that would work out. Uh, that's something, again, I, I'm, I currently advise the, the tenant who is looking at purchasing this property, outlined in red, um, to try and work that issue out with the adjacent property on. That's all that I have, Chairman. Are there any questions for staff? Well, the city landlord in there, that number 513 building? Not to my knowledge, that picture there doesn't show the James Street runs parallel to George Street okay. on the east side. Okay. So there is access there, but you see the shade, the shading of the building at 513? Yes. That is where I believe that this storage ramp is. Mm -hmm. right. So again, the storage ramp? Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, delivery dock maybe? Where so the is ramp he using is. That man's, I'm sorry. So is he using the man's lot to pull his trucks in? He very the well could. He yeah. very well could be. No uh, way. Uh, but I have a feeling once uh, the applicant will comply with our ordinances that for the time being with right. the six foot security fence. Right. And uh, it will be slatted to avoid anything, anybody from seeing through it. Yeah. Um, I don't see any problem with it. But I did want to assure you that uh, with the all the property around it is general business. If he, right. the, it is all surfaced uh, asphalt surface properties, and again, uh, it's been that way for years. But again, I think he is looking at improving the property by having a modular unit there to be serve as a principal mm -hmm. place of business. And uh, and once that is located there again, he will hopefully can. Uh, well, I know that building across the street, though, of the um, wiring. Uh, the Southern Southern State, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That flooded back in the Yeah, 15. it should did. All right. It oh, did. Yeah, that building flooded bad. It flooded. So, I mean, I, I don't see where there's a big problem with this because most people aren't going to build around there. Right. I think it'd be an improvement for what I see. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Somebody put it on the stand. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, you so, know, we, we did have really? some. <laughs> Some questions up front, you know, about auto uh, repair services, um, storage. But as you get closer to Center Street in the downtown central business district, mm -hmm. that is a prohibited use. Right. But this is actually about two or three you blocks outside, outside of that outside. area. Okay. So that's what I ended up having to tell the, the uh, callers who anonymously called and wanted to bring attention to that matter. But I think mm -hmm. we've resolved it at this time. <laughs> All right. I don't see a problem. I don't either. Any other questions? And I'll stand aside and let you do your business. All right. I think I'm good. If you good. Are, make a motion. Cool. Let's make a motion. That we approve SU 2-22. Two, two Will Wooten. Get a second. Second. All right. Well, we have a... Uh,
section of the site for residential use since the comprehensive land use plans adoption which was in 2013. No other individuals were present to speak for or against the request. The only comment I'd like to add is that that is correct that the that our land use plan was adopted in 2013. Um, usually a comprehensive land use plan it's used after 10 years uh, most municipalities um, need to consider having their land use plans updated. If we're going on 2022, so we're almost there to where we need to consider having that done very soon. But um, anyway, that is the case they are making for the uh, conditional rezoning. Do you, Chairman, or members of the Planning Commission have any questions with regards to this information presented tonight? Hmm. Only thing I asked about, I know it's I'm familiar with that property for the industrial, I know it's all on the east side, right? Yeah. And you got the, the, all the car lots they coming out. That's correct. Is it, is, so, yeah. Yes. It, the question is, are we actually voting to, to do that because we have to change the zoning or is it because of the, the industrial use out there? What do we actually need to do? Well, most of Goldsville, I do believe, is about all, <coughs> just about all of us are 16. I mean, well, that's what I'm asking. I just, uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in line with what yeah. I'm trying to understand. Right. I understand right. what they're asking, yes. So I mean, did, most of this city is already R16. Mm -hmm. Am I about correct on that? We have a large part that is predominantly R16 yeah. for residential use, yes, right. sir. But to okay. backtrack on your question, uh, Mr. Waters, uh, yes, so if you're looking at this picture here, our comprehensive land use plan, right. directly to the east, you're right, you're going into Park East, yeah. directly east, and you're going south on Oak Forest Road, you get it more into the uh, general business zoning district, because that's where all our car lots are located off of McLean yeah. Street. Yes. But as you go east, the majority of that is industrial or industrial business park, IBP-1. Now this location here, yes, it Comprehensive plan does show industrial. Remember the comprehensive land land use, it is a guide. It's not something that you have to follow, Etched in stone, yeah. but you mm -hmm. have to show uh, consistency zoning wise. You, or you, you wanna show cons consistency with regards to land use or compatible zones in and around it. And uh, as well as if in making the argument to change it. And you wanna show reasonableness too if you were to zone it other than what the comprehensive land use plan says. Again, the land use plan is a guide and a guide only. Now, again, to directly to the west, you'll see the property that was uh, proposed as commercial. Uh, that's where they built the other apartments. That's on. right. And commercial, if it was on commercial, then you could have residential multifamily developments in commercial zoning does there's nothing wrong with that the only thing when you compare the two here yes you do have industrial recommended according to the land use plan and again you've heard it from the applicant of which we made note of in your oh, yeah. staff report that right. they are going to make the argument that hey again i'll read again just for my own clarity that in addition, Ms. Vegas stated that while the current land use recommends industrial for the site, new residential development trends consisting of higher density and infill development warrant further consideration of the site for residential use since the comprehensive land use plan's adoption in 2013. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll leave that with you tonight. It's a- uh, Kind of my thinking on it, if you left it industrial, Mm -hmm. Then that apartment complex is going to have an industrial site next to it. Yeah, right. I mean, what's the difference? Well, that's my thinking. <laughs> our rights to what we can. Right. My question was not what he's asking, but mm -hmm. do we have the authority, you know, to uh, the way it's written up about the industrial there? That's what my question was. But seems like we've got around that. You 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 have the choice for what you feel is best and what is in the public's it's best it's interest it's going forward. Um, but again. Uh, the council in the end is uh, charged with uh, making the decision based off of 
the evidence presented, not the evidence presented, but the actual comments made mm -hmm. and what has been shared tonight. And yes. they have the ultimate decision making uh, whether or not to approve or deny the request. It's not like a special use permit where evidence is used to help determine does it meet particular standards of the ordinance. This is something that, again, um, it's, uh, it, uh, it, again, the comprehensive land use plan can be changed. Your question is, should it be changed? Uh, and, uh, and, and then you have to determine uh, why should it be changed. And so, anyway, I think that's the best way for me to stay down the middle of the road tonight right. with this. Well, and, I have a uh, question. You, yes, the, you said the one that says commercial yes, was just approved for 107 townhomes. Right. And these are apartments, correct? That is correct. Okay, so the one that was approved for the town hall, townhomes, how big was that land? This land is, says it's 20, 24 acres. So how, and they're going to put 300 and some odd apartments on it. But the one beside it, how big is that acreage that just went for 107 townhomes? Because, no offense, but people who buy in townhomes don't want to live next to an apartments. Well, if the apartments, apartments aren't going to be... Also. No, they're townhomes, not apartments. Difference. Apartments are rented, townhomes are owned. I thought they were apartments. No, they're 107 townhomes. So they'll be bought. Oh, okay. But these are apartments that will be condos. rented. Oh. So you have to stop and think about people who are buying the 107 townhomes they, they're buying them because there's nothing, there's not an apartment next door. There's apartments down the road, but not right next to what they're getting ready to buy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I so I'm pretty sure the person who, who you know, hmm. bought the land for the townhomes. Now, my neighborhood has a look ton at this. of yeah. apartments around it. Right, and that, then that's your neighborhood. But if we're talking about the people who just, you know, mm -hmm. went from commercial to industrial, who just invested in 107 townhomes. Do you want 314 apartments next to you that's in an industrial? Because I'm pretty sure the people yeah. who did the townhouses didn't think that anything would be changed beside them to throw 314, 315 apartments next to them. There's a difference between a townhome and an apartment. So my question is, how big is the land the townhomes are going on compared to the land that the apartments are going on? I don't have the exact specifics to answer that question. This map shows that if you were to compare the two um, properties, um, I would think that the 25 acres there, the Sutter property, is a little bit larger than that that was recently approved to the left. Yeah, this one says this one says it's 20, 24 point, I can mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. 24 point some odd acres. So the other one would probably be about 15 to 20 acres. So this one has about five to ten acres. Right. Okay. And two, what's interesting also is, uh, you know, right now, the current zoning for the property is R16. So right now, you can develop that for residential development as long as it meets our yeah. residential standards at this time. And right now, you see office and institutional there to the east. You see industrial there. I believe it's uh, um, has some industrial own property there and a, a piece of GBCD um, just to the immediate piece of the property. But again, um, so if it's also already residential, why does it need to be rezoned in order for well, a multi family? Exactly, exactly, because it's uh, it does require a, a a higher density for that location, and um, and yes, it does require. A special use permit for doing so. Okay. Multi-family. Yes, ma'am. And this went to a public hearing, also, right? That is so. correct. It went to a public hearing at our April 18th meeting. Right. And so the townhomes, the one the developer from over there, no one had anything against. So or? the townhomes, we did have some opposition there yeah. from the neighbors off of Corbett Street. Right. They did not want to see it because originally, as you see there, it's single-family. To the left, but now that zone has changed to residential six conditional zoning for townhome development complex. Gotcha. So it's a now they're going to be selling those townhomes or are they going to be rentals? You know, Miss Rose, I don't know. 
Are we allowed? Does he, does he know the answer? Are we allowed to ask him where all That's not his property, though. You're more than glad to answer it, but Mr. Smith, I, like I said, I don't know that he knows what's going to happen. I thought there was going to be I don't Reynolds, know. The, the one from the other way. Right. I thought there was going to be That was mine. Right. Town yeah, Hall Junior's Place is a two story building. Are you aware that there's a town hall for new rentals at all? I don't think they specified what particular town homes were sold. Yeah. Now, whether or not the owner right. turns around and rents them. Exactly. Unless, they're, unless they're in the covenants for the development themselves, we won't know. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. recall it being said. say they had each year they would um, report to the register of deeds? Um, and I think that she said would be. You know, the expense place down on Berkeley Boulevard? Yes, sir. Those are townhomes mm -hmm. that were rented. You're right. Uh, Um, can I pull up the, your conditions one more time? Yes, Ms. Figaro, it just says, uh, so again, most of the time when there are storm water um, measures involved with the development, uh, city personnel, city staff have to have access to the property to ensure compliance with the with our development regulations that they're maintaining any ditches or, or drainage um, along the property to make sure it's, it's acting like it's um, designed. And so basically they're just saying that they would provide that access easement and it would be recorded in the register of deeds um, prior to the certificate of occupancy. That's all they're saying. They're just saying, hey look, that will be done, and that's a requirement of city engineering anyway. Yeah. But some of these are just straightforward um, conditions, but that's all. Well, Ms. April, um, mm -hmm. you call it April. April, <laughs> when you say that most people that buy a town home don't necessarily want to live next to, you know, apartments and stuff, I guess, um, I'm used to that because now it's Andrea, you know, um, they had million dollar condo and home. And, and, I, and I understand and this. right across the street from public housing down in Old Town, Virginia, Alexandria. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's just other issues with this that it's not sitting right, you know, well, if you don't vote at all, it will be counted as an affirmative. Do, do you feel like you don't have enough information on it? Right. It's Basically, just, yeah, I'm the same way. I don't. I don't think I have enough information on yeah. this to really to answer it. I mean, I just know how you know it's an industrial, and I know how we just you know town homes just got approved. So until we really, you know, if, now if, there, if everything was apartments on top of apartments on top of apartments, I would see nothing wrong, you know, you see what I'm saying? But we already had residential people coming in speaking out against townhomes that were going in. Sometimes we have to stop and think about the people that own the property surrounding what's going to go up now they really feel. I mean. Well, uh, we're not sure those townhomes aren't going to be women, right? Well, that's a good question until it's like I said, specified. We don't. So until we get actual more information. But then is it fair to stop progress on another unit because we now know about the other? And then we have to also look at, you're talking about how the people feel. We're talking about major tax increase with these apartments coming in that the city needs. It needs. Bad. Bad. Because hey, we need the money. Yeah. So if we don't do that, then what's going to go in there is an industrial site. And I'd rather live next to some apartments than I have an industrial building. No, can I ask this question? I don't know if I'm allowed to ask it or not. Are these apartments that are going to go up, are they going to be low-income housing? Are they going to be normal apartments? You, you know, what are they going to, what kind of apartments are they going to wind up in? You know, that, that's, that's a question. Sure. He's got an answer. 
I mean, if you don't mind me asking, no, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled that you did. Because, like, like I know Laurel Point went up years and years and years ago, and it first came out as a high dent, you know, high neighborhood, and now it's, you know, it's based on income, which is is perfectly fine. But I kind of like know what's going, you know, where. Yeah, that's a fair question, and I think your concerns are valid. I, I have worked for, as, as a consultant, I've worked for Cavus and Tax, who is the developer. Mm -hmm. um, Can you stop loud? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pass you. It's I've worked for Cavus and Tax for about nine years now, and Watson Cavus is, is the person I was speaking with him this morning. Um, he builds a quality high end product, and, and he's been doing this for years. You know, stainless steel appliances, granite countertops. Uh, he likes to amenitize his apartments. What you'll see on that layout is you, it's not building an asphalt and building an asphalt. There's a lot of green space in the middle. Yeah. Um, the way we lay those apartments out, if you know, the the, uh, the mail kiosk is in the clubhouse, you can actually, if you come home and you and you park your car in front of your unit and you go check your mail, you don't have to cross asphalt at any point to be able to get to the clubhouse. Okay. It's it's. Uh, so it's going to have a pool and all that. It will have yeah, all that pool, kind of stuff. Pool clubhouse. There's a pool house. He like he puts in grilling gazebos. There'll be a dog park. There'll be a children's uh, a top lot. He, he he up until this year he's I don't know how many of these he's developed because I did do all of them. He he's only sold one complex in Fayetteville because somebody made him an offer he couldn't refuse. He owns them. He builds. He actually constructs them himself. He manages them. Um, he's very proud of his communities, and he should be. Uh, it, I mean, if you want to see any, I can give you, I can tell you locations, give you examples of ones that I've worked on. He's done them in Nightdale, um, in Clayton. We did one in Myrtle Beach, and currently are working on one in Southern Pines, and looking at other areas. So, as far as you know, these are supposed to be. High-end yes. apartments. Yes, they are. They will be. Okay, that was just that was my only question. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Are we supposed to take it to a vote tonight or what? Make a motion. Well, yes, sir. Okay. Um, I will say that. Um, okay, so the next uh, sequence of events that will take place based off of your recommendation for or against the request. Um, the council has an option also. Well, they are the only ones that have the option. If they want to table their request, they could. Right. If they wanted to deny the request, then typically you'd have to wait a period of six months before an identical request could come back for the same subject Unless property. Unless we do it without. Unless there's substantial information that was left out or of the decision making process that would be significant as part of decision making. So uh, then it could come back sooner than six months. Mm -hmm. So just one to clear the air on that. So yes. I would uh, recommend a recommendation tonight. Now, is everything, so everything that they're requesting is they're lining up with the code, they're lining up with our requirements as far as with staff's recommendation? Um, Chair, the only thing that's not lining up at this point in time is the comprehensive land use plan. Um, you mean the R16 part? Well, the currently the, 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 it is R16. I'm um, on the R6 part. But the, uh, if you look at the current zoning, it is R16. So right here, right now, if somebody proposed to come in and create a residential subdivision meeting the requirements of our R16 zoning district, they would be permitted by right to do right. that. But because there is a change of zone um, and taking the, the property to a higher intensity use. Um, our codes will dictate that if there is a change of zone, the comprehensive land use plan is recommended industrial for the site, okay? So, uh, 
that building that's right, I can't, I'm sorry, it's not up there, but it's on our table. Mm -hmm. Is that an, in, I've been by there quite a few times, I can't remember, is that some kind of industrial business right down that corner? The, also? What about all over there? I'm trying no, to figure something. Uh, what is that's there? That's uh, Larry Cheney's place. Um, is there a the Southeastern lab. Laboratory? Yeah, Southeastern yeah. Lab. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just happened to see it on that sheet there. Uh -huh. So Mr. Smith has been kind enough to, to produce a map here showing the names of these industries. But yes, if you look directly uh, to the north, as we're going north where their uh, Butterball is located. Butterball is located right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Southeastern Laboratories is right here. Mm -hmm. This property belongs to Southeastern Laboratory. It's currently undeveloped and it's showing general business conditional district. But right now it's currently vacant. But this is Southeastern Laboratory. This is Butterball. Um, I don't know. I know the names of each one. I don't know the specific nature of what they do um, without uh, inquiring into some staff to, to get more information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, uh, Chairman, yes, if that's right now, they they are making the argument or the case. Not argument, they are making the case that um, current trends are leaning towards residential development, and that our comprehensive land use plan uh, will be needing some updating to address those trends. But at this time, the comprehensive land use plan does recommend res recommend industrial corridor property. Any other questions? We're ready to do something. Yeah. Okay. We're ready to make a motion to uh, oh, go ahead. accept or approve, <laughs> accept or deny the request for rezone. Right? This is the rezoning, right? Are we doing the rezone part of it? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Rezoning of it. Motion. Anybody want to make a motion? Motion to approve it. Okay, Mr. Rose is making a motion to approve. Any want to second it? Uh, I will. Mr. Waters to second it. Shall we take it to a vote? All in favor? Say aye. 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 And and against? Any against to this recommendation? Okay. We got to say one else. Oh. Yeah, rezoning. Rezoning. That's correct. It's just rezoning. Yeah. And tell me the difference between 16 and 6CZ. Please, if you don't mind. No, sure. I'm sorry, I'm making you No, move. no, please. I ask all the way. Um, <laughs> residential 16 is a um, is a land use that basically where you would have low density development where homes would be spaced further apart because they are required additional acreage. 16,000 minimum square feet would be required before um, you could develop the property. So if somebody wanted to develop subdivision on that piece of property, it would have to be a minimum of 16,000 square feet to be able to do so. We have uh, some more restrictive zoning when it comes to R20, in some cases R40. But uh, so the R6 would actually, the as we're going down on it, we're actually increasing density. So you so would have- So the difference have, is it wouldn't be one single dwelling, it would be stacked on top of each other, but still same. Exactly, same closer side by side. Some could be zero lot lines, some, some could be 10 feet between structures, some could be 20, depending on the multifamily design requirements for that right. zoning district. So again, here, uh, as you saw the, the site plan, you've got uh, yeah, he looks like more people concentrating in one place. At yeah. least distance between the buildings, which is yeah. looks like it's going to be nicer. They're not going to be stacked one on top of each other. So that's more my concern. Yes, as uh, Miss Smith said, it'd probably be best uh, if there is going to be uh, uh, 
a difference in our voting. If it's not unanimous, it's probably best to go ahead and, uh, if you don't mind, please raise your hand, okay. Chairman, um, at the vote, and she can record that. Yeah, All right. So let's bring, it, let's bring it back to a vote. All in favor and approving, let's raise your hand. Rezoning. Thank you for answering that. Sure thing. All righty. Anybody against? All righty, we have a unanimous approval for the rezoning request. Uh, the recommendation from the Planning Commission would be to approve the request from R16 to R6ZZ. We'll present that to the Council at their May 2nd meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and so the only other thing that we have to discuss is just to let you know what's coming down the pipe. We do have a, a couple of uh, pieces of property located uh, on the east, south side of East Paytown Road between Ashley Avenue and Country Day Road. Piece of property being rezoned from R16 to R12. Conventional zoning, we don't know the specific use and are not required to know the specific use for that piece of property. Um, the second rezoning request is from uh, the applicant is Duke Energy Progress for a piece of property located on Thoroughfare Road between Sandy Lane Road and Central Heights Road going from a residential R20A to I2. This particular piece of property has a substation on it and uh, they're trying to rezone it for a more appropriate zoning district because as you know R20A would not be appropriate for that particular mm -hmm. property. Uh, so and then lastly Alpha 13 LLC is looking at rezoning from R16 to R12CZ. Um, property is located on West New Hope Road between Somerville Lane and Twin Oaks Place and this will be for a residential subdivision. So we've got a lot going on in the planning department. We'll bring it to you at our next scheduled meeting at the end of May and um, have a good night. All right. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you. Thank you.